Hey everybody, welcome back to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and here on my YouTube channel. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use a couple of third-party plugins, some analog style plugin emulations to beef up and spice up our easy drummer three drums to make them sound more rockin', more polished, a little bit more aggressive. That's what we're gonna do in this video. So before we get started, if you like what you see in the video, please hit subscribe and give me the old thumbs up and hit the notification bell. Also, if this is your first time here, go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com because I wanna give you a free mixing course. It's right on the homepage, it's a big orange button, Click on it, you can't miss it. It's my gift to you just for visiting homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm gonna give you something else for free. So let's check it out. So here we are. We're in Studio One version six here, but this will work in any DAW. And honestly, this technique will work with really any virtual drum uh, VST. I just happen to be using Easy Drummer 3 here. If you wanna learn more about Easy Drummer 3, especially how you multi-track out your drums to separate faders inside of your DAW, check the link in the description box. I just did a video on that as well. So um, here's Easy Drummer 3. And basically what I did is I just picked their, you know, their Easy Drummer Bright Room, the original mix, and here are the sounds. Sounds great on its own. Easy Drummer 3 sounds fantastic. I went to the Grooves library and I just picked out a couple of grooves here and just did a loop. Basic verse, you know, with a drum fill and a chorus section, and that's really about it. And then what I did is I uh, dragged that loop or that little song that I created here on their timeline. I just dragged it here into Studio One on a MIDI track here. So we have all our MIDI drums here. Um, and again, all of this now, if you look in our console view, is all multed out to separate tracks. So I have the kick on one track, the snare on another, hi-hats, tom, one, two, and three, floor tom, a ride, and then a combination of the overheads in the rooms on a stereo track. Again, go check the video link in the description box where I show you how to get all of your drums on separate tracks here. And then I also show you how to convert the MIDI to audio and all of that stuff. So I have some plugins on here, but everything is bypassed right now. So here is the original uh, drums that are coming out of Easy Drummer. Oh, and by the way, I have this uh, bass track in blue, this easy bass track that I created. We'll use that a little bit later to kind of put these drums in context with a bass guitar. But here is the original sounds coming out of Easy Drummer. Okay, awesome drums, Easy Drummer 3, sounds great, right out of the box, it really does. But what if, what if we wanted to dress these up a little bit? How much better can we make these sound? Can we make these sound even better? Well, let's try. So I have a series of plugins that I added here, but let me show you here. So the first thing I did on my master bus here, as you'll see, we have the Virtual Console Collection by Slate Digital, and I'm using the Neve console emulation here. And again, I've said this a million times to everyone that asks me about third-party plugins when they're first moving from their stock plug into third-party. What plugins do I buy? And I always say the best bang for buck is the Slate Digital All Access Pass for 15 bucks a month or whatever it is. You get access to all their plugins. I use them all the time. They're great. You'll see them in many, many of my videos here on YouTube. So I'm using the Virtual Mix Bus here and I'm just using the Neve console. You could use any one, but I'm just using the Neve. And then on each individual drum track here, I'm also using the Virtual Console Collection on that same Neve console setting, right? Makes sense? So we have the Neve across all the tracks. That is the first plugin or the first instance across all of these tracks. And right now you see they're shut off. All these drums are being routed down to a drum bus. And on that drum bus, once again, I have the virtual mix bus. This custom series EQ and the custom series lift right now are shut off. I'll bring those in a little later to show you kind of another layer of way we can enhance our drums. So right now you'll see the power buttons are off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn on the master bus, and I'm just gonna turn on, halfway through this loop here, I'm just gonna turn on the first layer of plugins, which is just the console collection, just the Neve. And I'll go back and forth so you could hear 
what the Neve, just a console emulator, does to these drums. So here we go. Okay, so you can hear there that all that this Neve is really doing is it's adding a little bit of bottom and a little bit of top. It gives it a little bit more thickness. It kind of glues it together a little bit. Console emulation plugins are great. I happen to be a favorite of the VCC, but you could have done something very similar with the Waves NLS. Um, and there's other plugins out there that do this. You could also just, quite honestly, if you just had like, let's say a Neve channel strip, you could just put that across all your tracks and not even do any EQ and compression and just kind of run it through the channel strip. But here it is on the virtual console. So that's one layer, the first layer, okay? Now, what we can also do is we can also now, um, on the kick and the snare and the overheads, and you could do this on all the drums, but to keep this simple, I added a little bit of EQ. So what if we added a little bit of Neve EQ to this, right? So on the kick drum here, I'm adding a tiny bit in at 50 Hertz, a couple of dB, and I'm adding uh, about a two dB at 7K to give us a little bit of the slap. So what if we just add a little bit of EQ to the kick and then on the snare, I'm adding a little bit, a couple of dB at almost 5K. I'm adding a about four dB at 110 Hertz to give it a little bit more beef. And then I have a high shelf about two dB. Again, this is all done with the knee VQ. And then on the overheads, slide this over. I'm adding again, a tiny bit at 5K. I'm adding um, a little bit at 110 as well on the overheads to kind of mimic what the snare is doing and a little bit on the top end. So now if I just bring in those three plugins, those three EQs, here's what we have. Keep your eyes on the power button. I'll keep the console collection in and I'm just gonna bring in those three EQs. Okay, so just a little bit of EQ to the kick snare in the overheads makes a big difference. Now, I'm gonna give you the accumulative effect of all of that. I'm gonna shut off, again, all the plugins. So now we're gonna take away the console and the EQ, and we're gonna see what that kind of does. So we have kind of, we're building this in layers here. Okay, so what a big difference. When you take away the, the plugins, the, the, the whole drum kit sounds kind of flat. And you go, really, it doesn't really sound all that great. And the drums, when we first started off this video, the drums sound great right out of the box. But you see how a little bit of EQ and compression, or a little bit of EQ and a little console emulation can really help. Now, next layer, what about on our drum bus if we've added maybe some additional EQ? And, and a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, enhancement here as well. So here on the drum bus, now I have the uh, EQing the entire drum kit, taking a little bit out at 400. I think that's it. Yeah, just a little bit out at 400 on the custom series equalizer again by Slate Digital. I'm going to turn down the output just a little bit just to make sure we're perfectly a little bit more level matched because when you boost those top frequencies, it can get a little bit louder. Um, and then 
followed up by the Custom Series Lift, which is really cool. I'm using a tiny bit on the low end and a tiny bit on the top end. So I'm gonna bring those two plugins in here one at a time. And here's what the Custom Series EQ and the Custom Series Lift can do to this drum sound. So again, just adding a little bit of bottom, a little bit of top, and we're pulling a little out of 400 to get rid of a little bit of the mid-range. It's subtle, but again, it's another layer of enhancement that you can choose to do. Also on the drum bus, what happens if we add a little bit of drum bus compression? So here is the Slate Digital FG Gray, which is the SSL emulation. Let's see what this does. So it gives a little more sustain to, the, sustain to the snare, a little bit more punch on the kick. Last thing we could do here on the drum bus, or you could have done this on the master bus, of what if we added a little bit of tape emulation? What does that do? I don't know, let's find out. Let's turn it on. We'll bypass it and we'll bring it in. So it gives a lot of bottom ends, a lot more glue and tightness to it. So you see how we're building this in layers, right? So that's our tape machine. So now we've added, so what did we do? We've added a console emulator, right? We added a little bit of a, a little bit of a EQ on kick snare overheads. We added a little bit of additional processing on the drum bus here with some lows and some highs and carve out a little bit of mids. And then we added the drum bus compressor and then we added a tape machine, okay? So that's everything. So now let's let's take them all away. We'll turn them all on and off. Oh, and we also have the master bus here where we put our console emulation on here as well. So we'll start with them on, we'll take them away. And here is the accumulative effect of what all of those plugins are doing to our already great sounding drums that are coming out of Easy Drummer. Here we go. Okay, what a difference, what a big difference. So now let's put that in context. Like I said, I have a little bit of a bass groove here I created with Easy Bass, just to put the, the, the drums in context with the bass so you could kind of hear the difference. So again, we'll take all the plugins in and out. There's nothing on the bass except for, oops, it's on my other screen here, except for Easy Bass. And I just created again, a little groove, no big deal, something easy, just so we could hear it. Here we go, here's with, easy bass and then I'll take the plugins in and out so you can hear how it sits in context. Here we go.
So there you go. So there's in context with the bass. So again, we don't have a full band there, obviously, but the more instruments you would build on this particular tune, guitars, vocals, keys, and others, it really gets the drums to stand up a little bit taller in the mix. It punches through, and it sounds a little bit more finished to me. Again, they sound great right out of the box, but just with some simple plugins, you can see what these analog style plugins can help do to not only your drums, but to all of your tracks. And if you're interested in how to use these plugins in the most effective way, because again, we just scratched the surface here. I do have a course for you that I'll talk about at the end of the video where you can get a discount to show you how to use these kind of plugins so you can enhance your mix productions. So that is our video here on how to enhance our Easy Drummer 3 drums with using some analog style plugins. Thank you very so much for watching me today. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, I want to give you something else for free. So first and foremost, once again, if this is your first time here, go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com, get your free mixing course. It's right on the homepage. Once you take that course, if you want to pick up one of my other paid training courses, especially the ones I'm going to talk to you about in a second, I want to give you a discount coupon code. The discount coupon code that you can use at checkout is YouTube25. That'll take 25% off any single course on my website. And talking about courses on my website, once again, if you want to learn how to use these kinds of plugins where we talk about console emulations, channel strips, tape machines, EQs, compressors, saturators, and much, much more on how to take these analog style plugins or these plugins that are emulated or that emulates the old pieces of classic gear, I highly recommend you check out my training course, Mixing with Analog Style Plugins Made Easy. It's over 20 hours long. If you even own a single third-party plugin, and I don't care what brand it is because we look at all of them, or if you're thinking about buying some third-party plugins, if you want to get the most out of them so you can really enhance your productions, mixing with analog style plugins made easy is for you. Also, we're talking about Studio One version 6 today, just released in the fall of 2022. If you are a new user to Studio One version 6, I have three training courses that'll help you tremendously perfect for beginners. The previous on a Studio One beginner's guide, mixing in Studio One and recording in Studio One, all done in version six. It'll work for a prime artist and professional. Check those out. Again, you can use the coupon code YouTube25 to take 25% off those courses as well. All the links will be in the description box below. Last but not least, if you did not see my video on Easy Drummer 3 on how to do multi-track output, both in MIDI and audio format, be sure to check the video in the description box below. I think there'll be a playlist for Easy Drummer 3, so you can click on that as well. So until the next time, I've been Dave with HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com. Thank you so very much for watching me today, and I'll see you guys in the next video.